Hey guys, it's NHL Hockey Vids here, and today we're going to be doing our very first podcast. I'm here with, with Trevor C. I love me. Check out his YouTube channel. So, our first, well, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about each team in the NHL and where we think they're going to place in their divisions. So, I guess we're, we're going to start with the Atlantic. And I'm also on iSportsWeb. Uh, for their predictions of the season, and in the first spot they have t- the Tampa Bay Lightning. Do you do you agree that they're gonna win the division? Well, um, I can definitely see Tampa Bay winning the division, as I think Nik- Nikita Kucherov could have a good year. Yeah, I agree. They said that they have the best all-around roster, which I I definitely agree with, especially now that Steven Stamkos is back from injury, and they said they should win it easily, which I definitely agree with. How many wins do you think they're gonna have? I can see the Tampa Bay Lightning being a 50-win team this year. Yeah, I would agree. I'd say 52, 50, 50 wins. And then second, they have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, I think I think second, I feel like they're going to get second or third. I don't, I'm not really sure which, which one, though. Mm, yes, the description here says another season for the young guns to flourish under Mike Babcock, and I could not agree more. Mike Babcock really is one of the best coaches in the year, and I just see their team getting better and better, especially with the veteran talent of Patrick Marlowe to help out. Yeah, I agree. I could see them being the second seed in the Atlantic, especially since the Atlantic isn't as good as definitely other the other divisions. And third, they actually have the Bruins, which I completely disagree with, I think. They'll be much, much lower than that. I think they'll be more of, like, a fifth seed. Yeah, um, I see the Bruins also being a fifth seed, and that brings us to our next point. The Canadians are at number four, and uh, I think I can agree with this. I think I can see the Canadians maybe getting a wild card spot, but not getting into the playoffs through being the best or one of the best teams in the division. Yeah, I think the only I think there's gonna be five metropolitan teams in the playoffs this year. So I think the Canadians and the Senators will be fighting for that third spot in the Atlantic. Very well said. And that brings us to the fifth seed, uh, the Senators. Now I think the Senators are actually going to round out the top three in the Atlantic. It'll go Tampa Bay, Toronto, uh, Ottawa, and then Montreal and Boston will be fighting for that four seed and a possible wild card spot, depending on how other teams in the Metro finish. Yeah, I definitely agree. Now, the Senators haven't really been doing much the past couple off seasons, but I think they're definitely good enough to the point where they can they can they'll make the playoffs, I think. I also see Eric Carlson having another fantastic season, and I uh, I see him beating out Burns and having the most points in the league this year by a defenseman. However, if he is injured to start the season, it depends on how long his injury is. Because if he's injured for like a month and the Senators get off t- to a terrible start, I could definitely see the Canadians taking that third spot away from them. I think he is injured with like a foot injury or something. That is definitely possible. I mean, if Craig Anderson doesn't have a very, uh, he doesn't have a season up to par with what the Senators expect, then they definitely a chance that they could drop out of that fourth spot. Mm-hmm. And Sorry, that three spot. Six, they have the Sabres, which I completely agree with. I think the Sabres, they are on the upswing. They have some good pieces, uh, but I don't think they're really going to get that far. Yeah, no, um, I see the Sabres, I don't know, possibly beating out the Canadians or the Bruins, but most likely not. It all depends on, really, how good Rasmus Ristolainen and Jack Eichel play, and with Kyle Poso back from injury, I believe, that could definitely help out with the scoring, but a lot of their guys are old, like, uh, for example, Matt Molson. But Evander Kane and Ryan O'Reilly have promised to break out Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have like they have good couple of lines, and then after that, it really, really falls off. Taking the seven and eight spot, seven the Red Wings, eight are the Panthers. I completely disagree. Disagree. Yeah. I think Detroit will be one of the worst teams in the league. Not the worst. I think they'll be the top five worst. I think they'll. I think they'll definitely take the. I think the Florida Panthers will definitely, without a doubt, be better than the Red Wings. Yeah, and the description for the Red Wings says another playoff streak is starting, and it's missing the playoffs, and I completely agree with that. I don't see the Red Wings being a playoff team for another four years. Mm -hmm. So now that takes me to my opinion on the Panthers. I think the Panthers will finish above the Red Wings. I think the Panthers will also finish above the Sabres. So um, I'll go first. I'll say what I think the divisional rankings will be, and then, Matt, you can go. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to finish off one Tampa Bay, two Toronto, three Ottawa, four Montreal, 
five Boston, six Florida, seven Buffalo, and eight Detroit. I actually completely agree, except I would switch Buffalo and Florida because... I think Florida just doesn't have enough, especially, I believe, was Barkov was injured last season, right? I believe he was injured for part of the season. Correct us in the comments if we're wrong, though. If he's not injured, I can they'll probably finish above the Sabres, but if he is again, I definitely can see them being the seventh, because they lost Marcheseau, who scored 30 goals, and they lost Riley Smith, who was pretty good, too, for a fourth-round pick, which is useless, pretty much. So, uh, Luongo's aging. They don't have Yager because they're probably not going to sign him back. The, I mean, they lost a lot this offseason didn't, and didn't gain that much. Mm. So, uh, that's pretty much wraps up the Atlantic. But before we go to the Metro, I'll just read off what the site had. The site had it at Tampa Bay, 1, Toronto, 2, Boston, 3, Montreal, 4, Ottawa, 5, Buffalo, 6, Detroit, 7, and Florida, 8, with the description as Florida being the most confusing team of the offseason season. I'm not sure what direction the team is trying to go. I agree with the description, but I don't agree with the placing. Okay. Now the Metro. One, they have the Capitals. Uh, I don't think they're going to be first. I think they'll be second or third. I think the Penguins will be first. Because the Capitals lost a ton of depth. Uh, and actually, I was looking at some of the stats in Ovechkin... It's actually getting slept on, actually. Like, this is really weird. But he usually scores, like, 50 goals, but only gets, like, 20. He doesn't get that many assists. But last season, he had 33 goals, but also 36 assists. So he finished with 69 points, which is almost 70 points. And everyone's, like, everyone's saying he, he's a bad year and he's on the decline. I mean, he could come right back and get the 70 points uh, next year. Yeah, that's something I also agree with. I mean, when the second best player in the league only gets 70 points, I feel that everyone overreacts. Pretty much, they do that with LeBron James as well. Whenever LeBron has a bad game, they always talk bad about him and say how he's on the decline. Just like Ovechkin, a 70-point year is nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, but they, they lost a ton of depth. They had to trade Marcus Johansson, who was a great piece, for a fourth-round pick. I mean that was a terrible trade for them, but they were trying. They had to get rid of some cap, but it was it was pretty bad. They probably could have gotten a, a third round pick, maybe even a second round pick, because Marcus Johansson he's young and he's good. They signed Kuznetsov to way too long of a deal. Oshie's way too long. He's gonna be paid like eight seven eight million dollars when he's thirty eight years old. That's ridiculous. Uh, and they lost they lost like three good def- they lost three key defensemen. I can agree with that, and um. I feel like the Capitals, I think they need to commit to either Cup or Rebuild. I'm not really sure what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're trying to win the Cup, but with a different squad, remake the squad. I don't know, but we'll see. Uh, Next is the Penguins, followed by Carolina, actually, at three. So I can agree. I think the Capitals will finish first, the Penguins will finish second, and the description for the Penguins is, we'll make the playoffs easily to try and three-peat. Yes, I I think the Pittsburgh will actually finish first, (coughs) but if... If Washington, if their depth manages to like to not completely fail, they they will definitely finish first. That's the, and that the only reason I'm really saying the Capitals won't finish first is because of their depth in offense and defense, especially defense, because they lost John, they lost uh what's it, Carl Osner, they lost Kevin Shattenkirk, even though they didn't have him for long, they still lost him. And then who else did they lose? They lost John Carlson as well. Yeah, they lost John Carlson. I don't remember to what team, but. But still, I mean, those are three, three of their top four defensemen. I think they that they lost a lot. Yeah, I can agree with that. Their defense really needs help. Now, actually, number three, Carolina. Uh, uh, I d- extremely disagree. I don't know if I see that either. I mean, who do they have really? They I mean, have a bunch of young pieces. I mean, <coughs> they. I think they have a chance for the playoffs as a fifth seed, maybe fourth seed, if Scott Darling is up to par. Yeah, I mean, Tuevo Teravainen could have a breakout season. It's very possible for Tuevo Tuevo Teravainen to have a breakout, very breakout season. Mm -hmm. They have pretty good defense. They have pretty good offense, but their goalie is really lacking, Uh, and if if he manages to play well, I will definitely, I could definitely... I would I would definitely see them making the playoffs, but that is the main thing that's holding them back. Not a three seed. I mean, when you take a look at your defense, you have 
very, very young players. You have Jacob Slavin, you have Noah Hannafin, you have, you have Hayden Fleury, and you have some solid defenders, and you have one of the best defenders in the league, who's often underrated, Justin Falk. So their defensive core is really getting it done for them. I like Scott Darling. I think he may be able to hold down the fort for them and net this year temporarily for them to make a playoff run. Nice. Fourth, they have the New York Rangers. I agree. I would hope they would not do that good because I hate them, but they probably will. They'll probably be fourth seed again. Heimer Glenquist will be good again. They traded. They had. They traded. To, <coughs> they they took away. They took Stepan and Ranta to Arizona for basically the seventh pick. And I think. Th- I think a, a couple like one other piece. I'm not entirely sure, which I think was a good trade. Not for what the Rangers are trying to do with win now, but I think in the end it will be a good trade because this is like this is like the I, I think that I'm. I think this is about their last season that they really have a chance at doing something before Lundqvist get, just gets too old. Yes, and um, bringing up the point, uh, you said that you completely disagree with the Hurricanes being at the three spot, but you also agree with the Rangers being at the four spot. If that's the case, do you believe the Columbus Blue Jackets, who are ranked fifth here for the Metro Division, are going to take the three spot? Yes, I do. Um... Yeah, I can definitely see that as well. I'm pretty torn between the 3-4, mostly the 3-4 and four spot. I don't know who I want to rank higher, the Rangers, the Blue Jackets, and I'm not sure if I want to rank the Hurricanes higher than either the Rangers or the Blue Jackets yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, they also bring up an interesting point on the Blue Jackets. They were a 500 team with, without the huge win streak last year. Yeah, so they were um, not... Oh, uh, they were a good team, but they were 500 without the win streak. They're definitely going to need Sergei Gabrowski to step it up, and it says on the site, we'll need some Sergei Bobrovsky magic to make the playoffs. Well, let's not forget, they won 16 games in a row, but that's <coughs> taking away all 16 games. They were a good team. We can assume they would have won at least half of them. That is true. How many, how many wins did the Blue Jackets win last year? I think it was about 50, so I think... I'm not, I'm not sure. No, but I think... I don't really remember. Well, case aside, they were a solid team. That brings us into the 6, 7, and 8 spot. 6 being the Flyers, 7 being our favorite team, Islanders, and 8 being the Devils. Tell me your opinion on 6, 7, and 8 spots. Uh, I think... The, I'm really torn in this division about 5, 6, and 7. Not so much 8. I, th- I, I think the Devils will be finished last. I don't think there's much of an argument as to why they wouldn't. But this is really tough, because I have the Hurricanes... And the Islanders competing for the five spot, not the Flyers, because you think about what they do. They did. They took. They replaced Steve Mason with Brian Elliott, who isn't that much better. And then they replaced Braden Chen with Nolan Patrick, who is not as good as Braden Chen right now. So I think people are kind of overrating their offseason moves, because they kind of just replace people, and some of them were detrimental to the team. With their Braden, Ch- they they traded Braden Chen. I think that was a terrible deal for them. So I don't think they'll make the playoffs. I'm torn between the Hurricanes and the Islanders. I want to say Islanders because I'm biased, but I would have to give the edge to the Hurricanes. But it will be very close. Both teams don't really have great goaltending, but if Grice can step, I think Grice is underrated. I still don't think he's that great, but he's I think he's definitely underrated. Yeah, um, on the CBS NHL spot, it said that Nolan Patrick is a top six forward for the Flyers. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought he was a third line center. But if if you want to make the playoffs and actually do something, like I saw some people having them as like the third or fourth seed. If you want to have, if you want to do something in the playoffs, you can't be having a rookie who might even get who might get injured. He has injury. He has, he's had injuries in the past. He might get injured, and then what you're gonna do? I mean, he might he might be a bust and get. 20 points. That could definitely happen. So, so once again, the website has, in order from 1 to 8, Capitals, Penguins, Hurricanes, Rangers, Blue Jackets, Flyers, Islanders, Devils. I went first last time, so Matt, you can read off what you think will be the Metropolitan Division mm-hmm. from 1 to 8. Yeah, this is probably the most changes I'm going to make. <coughs> uh, Central, I'm going to make a lot of changes, but I, I think this is going to be it. Number 1, I have Penguins. 2, I have Capitals. Three, I have Blue Jackets. Four, I have Rangers. Five, I have Carolina. Six, I have Islanders. Seven, I have Flyers. And then eight, I have Devils. Yeah, um, I actually completely agree. I have Capitals. No, I have Capitals before the Penguins. I have Capitals, Penguins, Blue Jackets, Rangers, Hurricanes, Islanders, Flyers, Devils. And 
I I was really thinking about putting Carolina in the four spot and New York, the New York Rangers, in the five spot. I can definitely see Carolina finishing above New York, depending on if Lundqvist doesn't have a good season and basically the Rangers' old players getting older and the Hurricanes' young players getting older. Because when old players get old, they get they get worse. But when young players get old, they get better. Yeah. And also, if, like, that season when the Islanders were good out of nowhere and Tavares was, like, second place in points, I think if he can repeat a season like that, I think the Islanders will finish above the Hurricanes. I think he definitely can. I think he's going to get around 80 points this year. Uh, and if I think if Eberle plays well for them, I think they will definitely... I think they'll take that fifth seed, but... I might yeah. just be biased. Well, that, there might be some bias there. As the website says for the Islanders, has them at the 7 ranking, says, The team has a lot of pieces, but also a lot of holes. He's not sure Jordan Eberle was exactly the answer. I think Eberle and Tavares may be able to have, to have a spark and go off like they did in juniors, I believe. Yes, I think so. Alright, moving on to the Central. I'll read you the website. This, um, I don't really know what to say, but it has Dallas Stars at 1, Wild at 2, Jets at 3, Blackhawks at 4, Nashville at 5, St. Louis at 6, Colorado in the last. Um, well, first off, I don't... Let's start start at the bottom this time. Colorado, I think it's clear-cut they'll be the worst team in the league. I think they'll be worse than Vegas. I can see Colorado coming in 7th. I don't really think there's much to say. The website sums it up when they say good luck in the draft lottery. Moving on to six, St. Louis. I also agree with this. The team isn't bad, but the division is one of the best. Yeah, I, co- I completely agree. I could see them getting fifth seed, but I'm not sure who I would slot at the fifth seed. But I would, I'd say six seed makes makes sense. Now moving up to five, the defending runner-up, Western Conference champions, the Predators, it says they're gonna lack goal scoring, which I mean they will. Mm. What? Uh, what offseason moves did Nashville make? They got Alexi Emelin, a defenseman. They got... I don't remember who else. They saw, they got they got a rookie, but he's not going to play in the NHL. But their, their young team, I think Philip Forsberg will play better than he did last year. I think, our, if, I think they'll be an average offensive team. They're not going to be a bad one like this website. This seems to be saying. I don't think they'll be a bad offensive team. I think their defense is enough to make up for them. I think it's all on Pecorino. If he plays like he did in Pittsburgh last year, they, this is how they'll be. They might even be worse, but I don't think he will. I think he can step up. Depends on how his age goes. I mean, I don't really see lack of scoring problems being too much of an issue. I mean, you have Ryan Johansson. He's he's young, right? Yeah, he's like 24. That 8x8 eight eight contract, though, was a bit extreme. I know, I know. I do not think Ryan Johansson's worth a $64 million contract over eight years. But, uh, <laughs> um, another source of scoring can be two more young players, Victor Arvidsson and Philip Forsberg. So I think they can provide scoring. And more importantly, they can get scoring from their defense. I mean, when your defense has Ryan Ellis, one of the hardest slap shots in the league. And he then, is injured, though. He's injured for a couple months. I know, but it will have to bounce back. And they also have Matthias Ekholm, Alexi Emeland, Roman Yossi, and P.K. Subban. That is the best defense in the league, hands yeah. down. Hands down. Yes, I definitely agree. And Yannick Weber, I mean, he's all right. I guess, and you got some Irwin, Irwin for a little bit of depth. So, and um, yeah, so no, I definitely see Nashville finishing in third. Actually, yeah, no, I, I mean the three teams they have making the playoffs divisionally: the Stars, the Wild, and the Jets. I mean, I have the Blackhawks, the Predators, and possibly the Wild making the playoffs divisionally. More like the Stars, actually. Yeah, like I, I, have, I actually have the exact same thing. I'm maybe in a different order, but that's what I have. And then I have the Wild at four, and then Jets at five. I have the, I have the Jets at five because, because they're very young. Uh, Mark Shafley, I thought he was overrated, and then I looked at his stats, and I was like, he actually isn't overrated. But they put him over like John Tavares, which I, I agree, I disagree with. They put him over Jonathan Taves and stuff. I definitely disagree with that. Jonathan Taves may not score as many points as Shifley, but he contributes else, elsewhere. I do agree with that, and I, be- 
And I think it's possible for five central teams to make the playoffs because if you look to the Pacific, you have Edmonton, then you have Anaheim, then you have San Jose, and after that, Calgary maybe. Calgary could Calgary possibly. Is the only really I, I, I think. I think. Uh, I think it's going to be four and four split for divisionally for the playoffs. Okay, so let's let's just talk about the Stars. They were the off season winners. I that's what I think. I think they're the off season winners. Other people, uh, they. They had a bad defense and bad goaltending, and they didn't completely fix it, but they definitely really improved in that aspect. They took, they got Ben Bishop, and they got Mark Mathot, I think it was. John Klingberg is only going to get better, hopefully. They draft, they got a top three pick in the draft. They drafted a defenseman. They added Radulov. They added Hansel. They added a lot of offensive firepower. I think they'll be the third seed. The Blackhawks, I think, will be the second seed. I actually think the Predators will be number one, assuming this Ellis injury doesn't come to bite them. It's, like, really bad. Mm. So, um... And then I have the Wild at four. So, for me, it's definitely going to be Nashville at one. They're ranked five here. Chicago at two. They're ranked four here. Dallas at three. They're ranked one here. Minnesota at four. They're ranked two here. Winnipeg at five. They're ranked three here. And then St. Louis and Colorado... Rounding out the Central Division. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Now let's go to Pacific. Number one, they have the Oilers, which I agree with. I feel like that's obvious at this point. I mean, yeah. unless the Ducks go on some insane, crazy run. However, if McDavid get if McDavid gets injured, the Oilers will not make the playoffs. If McDavid gets injured, a the hockey world will be shook, and b the Oilers will not make the playoffs. Yeah, Leon Dreisaitl is good, but the loss of McDavid it would just be too tremendous to overcome. Yeah, I can agree with that. And it makes you wonder, if there's no McDavid, does Dreisaitl step in and become one of the star players in this league? He already is a star, but does he become one of the best? Does Leon Dreisaitl become one of the best players in this league, getting first-line minutes? And if he's not behind the best player in the league? Crosby's best player in the league, but whatever. Second best player in the league. Uh, yeah, the, I think they'll win the Pacific. Yeah. Second, I have the, I have the Ducks. This website also has the Ducks. Getzlov is still very good. He scored, he was a point-per-game player last year. I think in, like, 73 games, he had 74 points. People don't realize that. He's still very good. Mm. Also, Corey Perry. I feel like Corey Perry is a bit overrated, but we might do a separate podcast about overrated slash underrated players. Yeah. And uh, real quick, while I talk about San Jose, Matt, can you check how long this podcast has been going for? So San Jose, I mean... 22 minutes. Okay. Uh, San Jose, I don't know what to think. I mean, does George, does, does Joe Thornton have it? I mean, I feel like they're still a good team. You have the second best defenseman in the league. You have Joe Pavelski, who's still very good. You have Logan Couture, who's still very good. I mean, even losing Patrick Marlowe, he's getting older. He wasn't doing that much for the team. And you still have Jumbo Joe, who's still a force. He's still a really good player, and he's still... Well, he's not the captain anymore, Rip Jumbo Joe, but... He's still who's a good player. Uh, Pavelski. Okay. And, and uh, Jones is pretty good, too. Oh, yeah, Martin Jones. And one of the most slept-on players in the league because he's hiding in Brent Burns' shadow, and his team does not want to stand the cup. Mark Edward Vlasic is also a very solid defenseman. So, um... Here they have four Los Angeles, five Calgary. I would flip them. I think mm-hmm. Monahan and Gaudreau are going to have good seasons, as well as the the Chuck. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Matt. Yeah, to, I, I, I call him Tkachuk, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Tkachuk. Uh, I think the fl- if Mike Smith plays well and he doesn't play terrible like some people expect him to, I think they'll be above the Sharks because they didn't lose anything. Their young guys are going to progress. I think if Mike Smith plays well, they make the playoffs. I think if he just plays average, they'll be a four seed, maybe miss out. Uh, yes, and now moving on, six, Arizona, seven, Vancouver, eight, Vegas. I have Vegas finishing over Vancouver and possibly even Arizona, depending on how good they can gel. Is Mark andre Fleury going to have a good season? Yeah, if Mark Andre Fleury plays like the way he did in the playoffs, definitely over Vancouver. If he plays the way he played in the regular season, they'll be—I don't think they'll be worse than the Avalanche, but they'd be pretty close. I think the Coyotes will de- finish over the Golden Knights no matter what, unless something crazy happens, like Ekman Larson gets injured. Uh, but other than that, I am pretty sure—I'm pretty sure 
So they have it as one Oilers. Agree. Two Ducks. I agree. Agree. Yep. Three Sharks. I disagree. I agree, I agree with that. Well, I don't know. I'm 50-50 about it. Four, they have Kings. I disagree. I have Flames or Sharks, whichever they can flip-flop. Mm, yeah, well, looking at their roster, I, I see what people are talking about. They... David Perron, people sleep on him. James Neal is an all-star. Marcheseau and Lindbergh are great players. But other than that, I mean, you have who? William Carlson. Moving back to defense, I mean... They had some good defensemen, and they traded them. I mean, yeah, I look at this list, and I see Jay Bischoff, C. Sasko, D. Coughlin, Derek Engelin, Jason Garrett, B. Hunt, Braden McNabb, John Merrill, Colin Miller, Reinhardt and Lucas Biza. I don't think they have a better defenseman than like I don't know. Well, if you're going by NHL, they their highest overall defenseman is probably an 82. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I, I do not see they them. They have four players. They have four defensemen that could be on an NHL team, and then other, and then they have one defensive prospect who shouldn't be on an NHL team. He probably will be though because it's the Golden Knights. I know. Yeah, no, I, I always felt that the Golden Knights were going to have a better season than people expected, but looking at their roster, I think I'm going to have to change my mind a little bit. I do not think they're going to have that good of a season. And I don't see them finishing over Arizona anymore. So, finishing it out, my rankings are 1 Edmonton, 2 Anaheim, 3 San Jose, 4 Calgary, 5 Los Angeles, 6 Arizona, 8 Vegas, and 7 Vancouver. I pretty much agree. Yeah, actually, almost completely agree. Now, do you want to do the playoffs or something? Oh, uh, yeah, let's just quickly do the okay. playoffs. Who do you think will win the Eastern Conference? Eastern Conference Eastern Conference winner is whoever wins the Metro. Whether it be the Capitals or the Penguins, I think it's going to be the Capitals. But uh, I see the Capitals and the Penguins both finishing over Tampa Bay. But unlike last year, I don't see three teams finishing over the best Atlantic team. I only see two, the Capitals and the Penguins. I don't think the Blue Jackets are going to have another insane win streak like they did. They made some decent but questionable off-season moods. Didn't they trade Brandon Saad for Artemi Panarin? Yeah. That's basic- that could be a great mm. trade for them. It might not work, though, because yeah. you don't know what he can do without Kane. That's just more of a replacement trade, basically like the Subban Weber trade. Only Subban trade that was better contract wise, all that stuff. Also, okay, so you have the Capitals. I have Penguins at one. So basically, what we're we have Penguins versus. Do you have two Metro teams uh, making the playoffs? I mean, five Metro teams making the playoffs, or just four? Um, I think I'm gonna go with four Metro teams making the playoffs. Okay, so I'm assuming the fourth. Atlantic team will be the lower one. Who do you have it for for the Atlantic? Um, actually, let me let me take a look here. I see Tampa Bay, Toronto, and Ottawa making it definitely for the Atlantic, and then Washington, Pittsburgh, and Columbus. I believe I said, and then I actually do think either the Hurricanes or the Rangers. I think both the Hurricanes and the Rangers will take the five spot, and I think it. I think the Canadians are actually going to miss out on the playoffs this year. It's okay. it's definitely possible. Matt, tell me your take. Uh, I agree. I think there will be five Metro teams. I think that's actually what most people think. I have one Penguins. The Penguins are going to play the Blue Jack. The, I, the Penguins are going to play the Hurricanes. I think the Penguins should win in five. And then you have Capitals versus Columbus. I think the Capitals will still win. In seven, it'll be close. I think the Capitals will still win, though. It could flip either way. I think the Capitals still win. They still lose in the second round to the Penguins, no matter what, though. Because that's just how it is for them. Yes, I can see that. So, uh, I think, uh, is it safe to say we can move on to the West now? Yeah, so we have our semifinals, or conference finals. Well, conference finals for me is basically Penguins versus somebody, anyone. Probably the Lightning. <laughs> anyone. Probably the Lightning. I think the Maple Leafs would beat the Senators. I think the Lightning will beat whoever they have to face. The Rangers, I think Lightning would definitely beat the Leafs. And then we have Lightning and Penguins in the conference finals. Central, one, Blackhawks, right? Or Predators, I forgot. Predators. Okay. So we have one, the Predators will face four, the Flames, right? Oh, 
Uh, um, yes. Oh, wait, but you had the flames at three. You had the sharks yeah. at four, correct? Yeah. I have five central teams making it, actually. Uh, so I have it as, for me, it's Predators versus, uh, who is it? Jets. Predators should win that easy. Five games. Uh, and then next, I have Stars and Blackhawks. I think the Stars are going to win. I think the Stars will beat the Blackhawks. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's definitely possible, but I think most people are sleeping on the Blackhawks extremely hard after getting eliminated in the first round. Did people expect them to make it to the finals five years in a row? I, I think people... I mean, like, it's hard because you have to expect them to have one first-round exit. But then when a team of that caliber gets eliminated in the first round, you're just like, what? How did that? How is that possible? They have so much talent, even though you expected that to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know, let's just... Okay, so then you're two and three of the Ducks, and for you, it's Ducks and Sharks. Who do you have winning? Between the Ducks and the Sharks, I think it is definitely going to be... <coughs> um, I actually think it is possible for the Sharks to take this one. As an alarm goes off somewhere in the room, sorry about that. But I think that it's possible for the Sharks to take this one. I know most people are going to say the Ducks. I know you're going to say the Ducks. I know everyone's yeah. going to say the Ducks. But I believe in the Sharks, well, because I have a beard, so. <laughs> sure do. But I'm I i would. I'm saying the Ducks, but I, I have the Ducks playing the Flames. I think the Ducks will actually sweep the win in five. I think the Ducks will win in five because the Flames can just can't beat the Ducks when they're in Anaheim. The Flames have lost, like, I don't know how many. I think it's like 20 or something games in a row in Anaheim. Something crazy like that. They just can't win in Anaheim. I think they'll take a game when they're at home. But in the end, I think the Ducks will will definitely beat the Flames. And I actually... Who do you have making the finals for the West? Western Conference Finals. The Oilers. Yeah. If if McDavid isn't injured, definitely. (laughs) Although, it's it's crazy, because other than McDavid and Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins, who else do they really have? Cam Talbot. They I, have I meant forward-wise. Oh, Lucic is okay. I mean... I forgot about Lucic, that's a good point. But other than four guys, I mean... I think they have the superstars and they have depth. Well, that's what you need to win a finals. Mm-hmm. How about on defense? Their, their defense, they have nothing spectacular, but it's good enough. Us... That's that's definitely true. Oscar Kleffbaum is actually it's like the it's like the predators. With, it's like the predators. Their offense isn't that good, but it's definitely good enough to win something. I can agree with that. And in the East, do you have the Penguins or the Capitals making the finals? Penguins. Capitals will not make the second. Did not make the third round once again. Uh I feel like this could be the year, but I don't see the Penguins repeating. It's extremely hard to repeat. I mean, the Islanders did it, but the Islanders are like. Gods, so in the eighties, <laughs> in the eighties, well, if only that was only a different today. time. It's it was a lot easier to three peat back then. Yeah, there's no salary cap. Uh, also, I think the the Penguins will make the Stanley Cup Finals, but lose. So you think the Penguins will lose to the Oilers? Yes. That's a pretty bold claim to say that Connor McJesus is going to um, win. Uh, win the Stanley Cup in his third year. Dave the Beast. It doesn't it doesn't matter. I think I think he I think there's very strong chance. It's unbelievable. McDavid's already in his third year. That's crazy to me. Mhm. It's like it's like people stop talking about Jack Eichel as soon as this season started. I know. Well, I mean the Buffalo. I mean you don't Nobody really talk about, about the Buffalo, Buffalo Sabers. I mean you don't really talk about managers, and as the Buffalo Sabers manager, Jack Eichel doesn't get talked about. Yeah, Budum Cha. He's a manager. He's so. A coach. Who do you have? What is your finals of a matchup? The Edmonton Oilers versus the Washington Capitals. Yes, that, I said it. I said crazy. it. I said it. I had the this this past season. I had the Capitals going all the way because their team. I thought they it's were just, just as they were good. just too good. How is that possible I for thought, them to choke? I mean, they were down three one. I was like, why would I ever pick them? They just keep choking, and then they came back, and then they choked in game seven. So I mean, that's just what you get. Well, Mark Andre Fleury saved the Penguins throughout throughout game seven. I'm pretty sure I was watching the first period, and then I and then the third period. For the most part, especially in the first period, the Capitals were all over them. Mark Andre Fleury was saving the day. 
Yes, and I mean, I don't understand it. It's not even like it's the same squad. I mean, you look at the team, and Justin Williams wasn't there when they choked. I mean, because they've been choking for how long? Six years? Seven? Since 2010, that is when... When they blew that three one lead. I mean, like, you look at all the players like who have you look at all the players on the team that just arrived. I mean you had Alsner. I mean not Alsner, sorry, you had oh, Niskanen no. who just got there from my Siri went off wall. I mean you had Niskanen who had just gotten there from the Penguins, you had Petrian uh sorry, Shattenkirk who just gotten there from the Blues, you had Oshi, you have Kuznetsov, you have Williams, and none of these players were there. It used to be like what? They had Semin, they had Vokun. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like, it's not even like it's all the same guys. It's basically just Ovechkin, uh, Backstrom, uh, Carlson, and Holtby. Those are the main guys who have been with them the whole time. A lot of the guys are new. It just seems like it's just Washington as a team and not really the players. I don't know if they've fired coaches. I don't know if they've changed staff. But I think it's just like a curse. Mm-hmm. I will be extremely shocked if they make the the Eastern Conference Finals. I think even if they do make the Conference Finals, I think the Lightning will actually beat them. I think it was. I think George Bush is curse, cursing them. I don't know why. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. So um, I think that's about it for the podcast, right? Yeah. That that is that's gonna wrap it up. So I have the Oilers winning the cup. We I have, have the Oilers winning the cup. We both have the Oilers winning the cup. He has Capitals losing in the finals. I have Penguins. Yep. So comment if you think we're idiots, and you can just you experts can comment down there. Yeah. Uh, be sure to roast the shit out of us and make us feel bad down in the comment section. Yeah, we really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to this. Hopefully you guys we you guys agree with this, disagree. Leave leave what you think in the comments. We'll see you next time. See you guys.